Hello everyone. So in today's tutorial, we'll be looking into more complex MIPS instructions. As you can see, we'll be looking into how looping works in MIPS and uh, more instructions where there are arrays like this, like, you know, the index is not specified. There is no number in the index. Right, so um, to start off, let's just far, first do the looping. So we'll just increase the font size over here. Right. So for looping, the first thing we have to do is initialize the counter. The counter is i. So the, the first thing we should do is we have to initialize the counter. Now in MIPS, you can't just move. Uh, there is no move instruction. Like you can't just move a certain number into a register. You have to add something to it. You have to always uh, initialize a variable by adding. So there are two kinds of add operations. The one that we've already seen is add, just add. So when we're trying to, for example, let's store the, uh, the i counter in $t0. So $t0, if you want to store that, uh, you have to add $t0 again. You have to add, sorry, you have to add $0. You have to add the constant $0. And you have to add the constant $0 uh, again. Right. So what's basically doing is you're just adding 0 and 0 together and moving it into dollar t0 so dollar uh, so adding 0 and 0 will give you <coughs> 0 right so we are just moving that value into dollar t0 register now <coughs> now the, the main part the looping part we're putting it in a label called loop this label will have our looping whatever instructions are within the scope of the for loop uh, will have will be in this loop right in this loop label so let's write it down. The first thing what we have to do is we have to uh, subtract i from uh, we have to subtract one from i. So i the value of i is stored in dollar t zero. So let's subtract one from i. So we're subtracting dollar uh, what do you call? It? We're subtracting. Let's keep it in dollar t one. So we're subtracting i uh, one from i. So dollar t zero and then sorry dollar t0 and then 1. Now when we are subtracting a constant number we have to write sub i. Sub i is sub immediate means we are subtracting an immediate constant. Right so when, uh, if it was just if it, if it was another register here instead of 1 we would have wrote it sub but since it's a constant integer we are, will be writing 1. Right so sub i. Ignore the lower, the uppercase, lowercase. Everything in MIPS is always lowercase, so it doesn't matter. All right. So <clears throat> next instruction, what we do is since we've since we've done it, now we have to find the offset. How do we find the offset? We need to do the shift left logical, and then the uh, let's just write in comments what part we have done. We have basically done i minus one here. Now what we're doing is we're shift we're multiplying this i minus one with four in order to get the offset. So dollar t1, sorry, dollar t1, and then dollar t1, multiply it with 4. We know that it's a power of 2. So this is what we're doing is i minus 1 into 4. This is what we're doing here. Right. So next what we're doing is we're going to add this with, uh, the, <coughs> with the register address. Now let's assume the register address for a is dollar s0. So we're going to add dollar t1 dollar s0 dollar t1. So this is what we have already gotten that. Now we are going to finally load the value from the memory location. So dollar t1 and then 0 dollar t1. If you're not understanding this part, please move into the <coughs> please look into the previous video. Uh, the previous video will explain how, why we're doing such things, why we're uh, doing such absurd things, uh, uh, like multiplying and adding. The previous video will uh, definitely explain, uh, clear out your doubts on this. All right, so finally we've loaded the value from a minus 1. So that's done. So a minus 1, a i minus, sorry, a i minus 1 is done. Now we're going to be loading value from b, b i. This is going to be easy because as we've done the hard one, we'll definitely be able to do the easy one. So add i, let's add, let's store all the stuff from b, b i into uh, $t2. So t2 will contain that. Now we're going to uh, add, uh, what you call, we don't need to subtract anything. So we just need to, sorry, we just need to basically 
shift left logical key. So let's first we have to initialize t t two. T two will contain uh, the value of t i, right? So we need to first initialize t two. So we have to first write add i dollar t two, and then dollar uh, what's it called t zero with the value of i. We are we initializing t two with the value of i, and then we are adding dollar zero. Dollar zero. Dollar <coughs> zero is a uh, is a is a register by MIPS that is al that always has a constant value of zero in it, right? So we need to do add i, just adding registers together, right? So after we've initialized it, now we do the same part. So shift left logical dollar t two, dollar t two, and then two. So that's done. Then to add dollar t one, dollar. <coughs> Let's assume the uh, value, the address of B, B, the array B is located in S1, and then we add dollar T2. T2. So sorry, this is one is dollar T2, right? Now we just load dollar T2 zero dollar T2, right? So that's done. Uh, ignore the <clears throat> uppercase uh, in the beginning because nothing, everything in MIPS is always lowercase, so it doesn't matter. Now we're done with these two parts. Now we're just going to add uh, what you call. <clears throat> now we're going to add these two, uh, these two parts together. So we're going to add, uh, and we're going to keep it in dollar. Uh, we're just going to keep it in as a temporary register called dollar dt3. So we're going to add dollar t1 and t2 together. Dollar t1. Dollar T3 will have dollar T1 and dollar T2. Right, so that part is done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to store this all this stuff into AI. AI will contain all the addition. Uh, AI will contain T3. Now for AI for accessing AI, we also need to do all those shifting stuff. So what we're doing is we're going to again initialize. Let's initialize T4 dollar T4 with <coughs> the I. <coughs> Sorry about that. So dollar T0 and dollar 0. We're initializing T4 with the value of I. Now that's done. Now what we do is we're going to shift left logical. Shift left logical uh, dollar T3. Sorry. Dollar T4 for dollar T4 with 2. Because we're multiplying by 4. And then we are adding dollar t4 dollar t4 with dollar uh, remember the array for s0 or for a was s0 so dollar s0 the uh, array index sorry the array address for the, the array a was stored in dollar s0 so yeah we're doing that now what we're going to do instead of load word we're going to store the word so storing dollar as uh, the contents of dollar t3 t3 was here okay let's just comment it out again this is what we're basically doing is i minus one plus b i this part is stored here now that we're going to be storing this part dollar t3 will be stored the contents of dollar t3 will be stored in dollar t4 so zero dollar t4 <clears throat> right, so now we have successfully stored that part. Now, the looping part isn't over yet. So we have to increment the counter, right? As we know, like I++ plus plus needs to be incremented. So we're just going to increment I++. Plus plus. How do we increment that? We just add um, uh, add I dollar T0, T0, dollar T0, 1. We're just going to increment with I. Now that part is done. Now we have to do a conditional now this time for, uh, for uh, checking if the loop should end or not. So we're going to be doing a branch, uh, a branching statement, and um, yeah, a branching statement. Now, a branching statement is usually done for conditionals, as I've discussed before. But we can also use it for loops. Uh, but we have to use another thing with it, which is called SLCI. This is called set if less than. So what what's what is basically does is like the value. Um, what you call? It? So let me just write the instruction first. So suppose we have another temporary for T5. And then the, the i, the value of i is stored in T0. And our um, our counter limit is, uh, let me check again, our counter limit is 10. So 10. So if T0 
number which is i if i is less than 10 then if, if i is less than 10 if that is true then the, the then the value that will be stored in dollar t phi will be one but if i is less than 10 uh, i less than 10 is false then the value that will be stored in dollar t phi is zero so let me repeat again if if i less than 10 then dollar t5 equals to 1 else dollar t5 equals to 0 so if uh, <clears throat> if it's less than if it's less than 10 that means we will uh, not we, we, won't, we don't need to branch we'll just keep on looping we'll just be staying in the loop right so now what we're going to do is if the contents of dollar t5 dollar t t5 and uh, is equals to dollar zero is not equal to dollar zero then we keep on we jump to the uh, label loop else we exit else we just exit which is this part this will be just <clears throat> the, some other part of the code right so basically what this line means is that if t5 not equals to zero that means if t5 is one that which means that if i less than 10 is true then we keep on looping but if t5 is equals to zero which which we know that if t5 is equal to zero that means i is greater than 10 which means we'll be exiting from the loop so it will just go to the next line which is exit so yes that's about it for this instruction uh the fibonacci sequence is also similar and I don't think I'll have to show this for because I, I've done the most complicated code here in this whole part. The looping principle, the looping principle is basically first initializing the zero counter, the counter with zero or one, whichever value you want, and then uh, incrementing the counter and then checking if the if it needs if it's less than or greater than the size and then making the jump accordingly. That's basically these four lines, this three line over here. And then this one line over here are basically the part of the loop. And this is this part uh, is basically this whole complicated part over here. So the Fibonacci sequences is also the same in that way. If you just write an incremental iterative approach for the Fibonacci sequence, then it will be easier for you to understand and then convert that code into, not the recursive approach, the iterative approach can be easily converted to this MIPS code. So yes, that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and enjoy watching and also learning it and also understood. Some, uh, please give a thumbs up and good luck.